Okay, this video is, is white rice healthy? Um, a billion out of a billion Asian rice eaters are skinny. Back when China just ate white rice in Japan, they were all skinny. And the only exceptions to that are like, if you watch a Bruce Lee movie, Bolo, you know, the big bodybuilder type guy, I think he's on steroids. And then there was that acrobatic fat guy, Sammo Hung. Um, he had rich parents and I think he was eating a high fat diet. Anyways, when you eat a rice diet, you will see that basically almost everyone is skinny. Um, and they were eating a lot of calories, you know, like over 80% of their calories from white rice. Uh, the lower the dietary fat, the skinnier the population. Um, and the skinnier the population, the less likely they are to have diabetes or hypertension. Um, the higher the dietary percent fat you eat, the more likely the persons are to become fat. Rice has only about 1% of its calories from fat. Low fat also prevents insulin resistance, so you don't get diabetes. Um, Walter Kempner used to feed intentionally. The guy was like a genius, and he was a kidney researcher, and one of his goals was to treat these diabetic patients. He specifically chose white rice because it had the best metabolic features to uh, treat these patients, and he got incredible results. He had a bunch of patients who had significant amount of reversal of their diabetic retinopathy. He kept pretty good uh, patient records and showed multiple photographs photographs of diabetic retinopathy being reversed, as well as abnormal EKGs uh, from coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis. Uh, rice is very low in protein, only about 5% of calories from protein. That's in comparison, let's say, with meats, about 50% protein. Salmon's about 50% protein. Okay, and the, the kidneys, the job of the kidneys is primarily to excrete dietary protein. So you make life easy for your kidneys when you eat low protein. And I'll tell you, mild kidney failure, is one of the most common things in America. You basically expect the patients to have mild kidney failure when they're over 50 years of age. It's that common. Um, Kempner also wanted to lower dietary sodium. As a kidney researcher, he knew sodium is a vasoconstrictor, and so it'll clamp down on those arteries, allowing less blood supply to the kidney tissues, and the kidneys are more likely to fail for that reason. Uh, one of the things you can do, uh, he would even rinse the rice in extra time to get rid of sodium at that time. That's what he was interested in. Um, he felt, too, the protein in rice was perfect, really low, but with enough variety of amino acids that a person would get everything they needed in terms of the good stuff, but not be burdened with extra unnecessary protein. Back in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, when the Japanese ate a diet based on white rice, they were some of the longest-lived people in the world, and that's despite the fact they smoked a ton of cigarettes. They smoked a lot more than Americans, and they had a very high-sodium diet. Despite that, they had really long lives. Um, Japanese smokers, they also had much less lung cancer than American smokers. And that's presumably because of their rice-based diet, which is, again, very low in protein and sodium. But it might also be because they have simply avoided the other bad things associated with a meat diet, you know, with all the animal protein and all the oil that was common in the Western diet at that time compared with the Japanese diet. By avoiding obesity and diabetes. Diabetes, by the way, is thought to be the number one cause of disease uh, in the United States in terms of morbidity, you know, destroying the eyes, the kidneys, the arteries in the heart, the arteries in the feet, the arteries in the brain. Diabetes is a disaster. You don't want diabetes. You know, the typical diabetic I talk to is cognitively impaired. Oh, I'm doing all right. Everything's under control. It's being managed. Yeah, right. That's why they're cognitively impaired. Diabetics do not do well. It's funny. I asked, uh, you know, I, I talked to a lot of neurologists. So the first neurologist, I ask them, what's the most common cause of stroke? They go, oh, it's diabetes. Second neurologist, what's the most common cause of uh, stroke? They go, oh, it's hypertension. And then the next one, I go, what's the most common cause of stroke? They go, oh, it's atrial fibrillation. So how could they all be right? Well, atrial fibrillation is the most common cause of a big embolism going to the brain causing a massive stroke. Hypertension is the most common cause of a lenticular striate artery like a lacunar infarct. And diabetes is just generalized cerebral vascular disease. Um... So what about people saying, oh, um, well, here, first of all, let's go to this next line here. By avoiding diabetes, you also avoid capillary basement memory and thickening. I gave a couple of recent lectures on advanced glycation end products and how uh, diabetes, hypertension also, will thicken capillary basement membranes, especially diabetes, but they both do, and that will cause tissue hypoxia, less ability to get oxygen delivery to the tissues, which can worsen cancer causation, activating uh, hypoxic inducible factor, vascular endothelial growth factor. The bottom line is you diminish the oxygen delivery to the tissues, you can potentially induce a Warburg effect, Warburg effect and cancer causation, whereby the cell will de-differentiate instead of being, being part of a multicellular 
organ system, a liver, a kidney, a lung, etc. It just becomes like an anaerobic bacteria out for itself to grow and ignoring growth control signals from the surrounding uh, cells. So anyways, you don't want tissue hypoxia and, and diabetes does that and obesity contributes to it. Obesity leads to hyperlipidemia, increased estrogen levels and all kinds of other problems. Okay, carbohydrate tolerance is an important point because some people say, well, I heard white rice causes prolonged blood glucose spikes. Well, that's only if you if you precede it, if you first eat high fat foods like meat and oils and whatnot, which are gonna cause insulin resistance, then you'll get a prolonged blood glucose spike. But if you're just eating the white rice, you get a very reasonable blood glucose uh, blood levels, you know, postprandial blood glucose, because um, you have better insulin sensitivity. That's why Kempner specifically chose to feed uh, the patients white rice. White rice has lower arsenic levels than brown rice, partly because you've sort of removed part of the, the rice grain. But um, it's also the case that the rice from southeastern United States has higher arsenic levels than it does from places like California, for example, because in the old days they would grow cotton in the southeastern United States. And because it was a textile product, they could spray it with more um, uh, pesticides because they had a problem with boll weevil insects eating the cotton. And so they sprayed it with a lot of arsenic pesticides. And then it takes decades to get that out of the soil. Um, then the other problem was the CAFO, you know, concentrated animal feeding organizations. They had all these chickens in these tight feedlots and they would get intestinal parasites. And then they would treat the chickens with arsenic type antibiotics for the intestinal parasites. And they also found the chickens would look fresh longer in the store, so they kept on giving them more arsenic. Chicken, you know, has got real high arsenic levels quite often. I would never eat chicken. Um, a lot of people think chicken's healthy. You know, they're stupid. Typical stupid person I know thinks that chicken and rice are good for you. No, they're both terrible foods. Chicken, I sorry, not, not rice, chicken and fish. The chicken and fish are both terrible foods. Mediterranean diet is a terrible diet. All right, well, anyways, the reason I'm going through all this, the chicken were given lots of arsenic to treat their intestinal parasites. So then the chicken feces were sold to the rice farmers, and that's how rice got into lots of different, you know, most uh, farm, uh, farmed rice that I'm aware of. But it's all over the world. This arsenic stuff is a problem. Um, and don't get me wrong, some uh, companies that make rice will post their arsenic numbers on there. Some places, you know, I know a lady who buys rice from Target and is low arsenic, says on the package. I know somebody says arsenic is low grown in some other places. So I'm not going to get into all this arsenic stuff right now. Um, I still eat rice myself about three, four times a week. I get organic rice that's, that's, that's company posts as arsenic levels. Um, they're quite low. Lombard Farms, for example. And um, I rinse it, you know, at least once, sometimes twice before I eat it. Um, I used to eat I used to eat rice every single night with uh, with beans. Rice and beans is like a classic food. Also, you know, my mother's from Puerto Rico, so she would make rice and beans like all the time. She used to often put chicken in it too. Unfortunately, we didn't know any better at that time, but quite often it was just the rice and the beans. Uh, sufrito. Okay, anyways, um, I made separate videos about cal uh, carbohydrate tolerance and about arsenic and the relationship of arsenic to rice where I go into more detail. You might find those helpful. All you got to do is go into the search menu for the YouTube channel and just type in rice or just type in arsenic and you'll find all these videos. Plus, you'll, you'll find more than you will just scrolling through. I think uh, it's just a more effective way if that's what you're interested in. Okay, uh, Dr. McDougall, you know, the great nutrition doctor, probably the best nutrition doctor in the whole world. He worked as an internist in California for over 40 years and he said that he never saw a single case of arsenic toxicity. So do I think the arsenic is significant? Yeah, you do want to minimize it. And, you know, maybe there's some subclinical patients with arsenic problems that never present clinically to a physician. So I wouldn't completely ignore it, but I still think rice is worth eating. So, you know, I think it's hundreds of times better to eat rice than eat chicken. Um, you can't beat it as a food. I had some Asian friends when I was in college in California, and they would eat rice three times a day. I still got friends, you know, uh, who eat rice uh, for several meals a day, you know, my doctor friends. So... Um, I know some uh, technologists who eat rice every day, a couple times a day, and they're skinny, they're fit, they're mentally sharp. So I think rice is one of the best foods in the world. The only downside to rice is this arsenic issue, and it's and it's been exaggerated how bad it is. When a healthy food has some stigma attached to it, it gets tons and tons of publicity. Everybody wants to badmouth plant foods. But you hardly hear anybody talking about the arsenic problem in chicken, which is a much bigger problem. So anyways, yes, I think white rice is healthy, and I eat it three, four times a week. Um, and hope that's helpful.